Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed, Tom Bob, have you ever noticed a correlation between heavier people and wider pelvic bones and wondering maybe they're just big bone? Well, there is a correlation between being heavy and having wide hip bones. So in cycling, we tone up our abdomens, our legs, our back, pretty much every muscle gets some work. So that's really beneficial for keeping our hip bones where they should be. However, I got some bad news for women and men. And a lot of viewers are women and I'm sensitive to this, which is one of the reasons you'll never hear me use dirty language or, or do anything that I wouldn't want my mother to see. <laughs> No, but seriously, you know, um, hips spread as we age. And as we get older, an 80-year-old, for example,'s hips may be an inch or two wider than he was maybe when he was 30. And if you have a lot of uh, weight, pelvic bones can actually spread. And that is real. I'll leave a link from ABC News about that. I normally don't leave news articles, but this one was well written. You know, because the width of the pelvic on older patients is something that a lot of people don't consider, and they just, they're looking at themselves, you know, what, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> You're just aging, and that's perfectly good. So, you know, women do notice it more and may be more sensitive to it, and regular exercise does help. Now, we do see flyers like the two-for-one pizza coming in the mail, and then we see the quick fix cures at the local shops that are gonna help us get into shape and lose those extra kilos. But I still haven't found anything better than cycling on a regular basis. And I've learned you don't have to be a fanatic, just regular. I wanna talk about how I measured my hips. Now, I'm not gonna do it, because I don't want to get wet. But what we do is, in my case, I'm using a board, but any hard surface, like a toilet seat, would work perfect. Lay a piece of clean paper, a clean, this is a clean, wet towel. You can use a paper towel, but this works really well. And what you do is you get yourself bare, and you get on this hard surface with your knees, rock and you'll feel you'll actually feel your sit bones making contact and that's when you know you, you struck home and you'll leave a little wet mark and in my case what we did is we marked those with a felt pen and I drew a couple targets and that came out to about 98 millimeters and with that I was able to look at my saddles and verify. Now, this is a stratos, which is a little bit narrower. And looking at the positions, now I marked this to 98. And sit, see where my sit bones rest. And it's right here on the L's. <laughs> so that's, that's fine. And if you look at the SMP Hydrad, which is a much wider saddle, you'll see that I can, I can sit up considerably more forward and I often do tip the saddle, which means to sit up forward on the horn when I'm climbing in kind of a semi-sprint. So I do tip the saddle from time to time with this one. This, I never really needed to. Spike is so, it's very different. But you'll see that by measuring your sit bones, you can identify the correct saddle a lot easier because most people's discomforts, numbness, and other problems aren't, aren't them. It's because the saddle is the wrong size. And if you're a big person or a smaller person, that really matters. This seat is on the very narrower side of what I would want. And that's on the wider side of what I would want. You understand? So my next seat will be lighter and it'll split the difference. 
But uh, this one is, they're both elegant. They both have a function. This is a quicker saddle. That's longer, more padding, more comfort for longer rides. So that's why the difference is. And plus it's a totally different type of play. Even sit differently. So all those considerations go into your saddle. I am going to go away. Uh, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget, I will be on vacation August 15th through September 10th.